You don't see that every day. When I was growing up, Clifford was actually one of the few things that really stuck with me. I remember reading the books and thinking, boy was that dog really big and really red. But then I saw the PBS kids show. And I'm not even joking when I say that it still holds up. Looking back, it was actually really good at teaching kids the importance of helping people and actually caring for them and what it means to be a true friend. Which are obviously morals that we've heard on and on before, but Clifford did it in such a subtle and kind of mellow way that I very much appreciate it. Anyway, the reason I said all that was because this movie isn't any of those things. I have been so looking forward for this movie the moment I saw the teaser for it. Even bigger. Look at that dog! <laughs> I mean, the fact that Paramount didn't learn their lesson after the Sonic the Hedgehog movie is kind of amazing yet kind of frightening. The only difference is between them is even though they kept delaying the movie from one to another, they didn't take the time to redesign him. And the funny thing is, I'm kind of okay with that because even though I thought the Sonic movie was okay, if they had just left the old design, I have a feeling that the ironic enjoyment scale would have gone by a million degrees. And that's why I kept saying that on the Blu-ray they should have put in a special feature where it's the entire movie but with the original design, but no one wants to listen to my ideas. But anyway, the funny thing is, well, let me rephrase that. There really isn't a funny thing about this movie. It's probably the most stock, cut out, made by executives that don't know what True Joy is kind of movie. Honestly, the other Clifford movie was just so much better. Not the Martin Short movie, but the animated movie that literally no one remembers. And I'm not joking when I say that I honestly think it's a really good movie. For kids, in the same way the Curious George movie is good for kids, and nobody else. And that's because it just got Clifford right. And that was the fact that whatever he would do, it was always an act of selflessness, and no other motive whatsoever, it was just to make others happy. But in this film, I got so bored that at some point I was almost considering not even making a video about this movie. For starters, the acting, I mean, what did you expect? Don't do it! No. The most lazy use of the Wilhelm scream. <laughs> the story, which is an evil organization that wants to capture the big red dog. And speaking of the big red dog, he's barely in the movie. Most of it is just the main girl who looks nothing like Emily Elizabeth, by the way. And she's not fitting in and being called really mean names like Food Stamp. You know a movie is good when that's your best insult. And then we have the uncle, who in my money is one of the most annoying characters I have seen all year. You're bloody well right I can. Bollocks. Rubbish. Golly wobbles. Are you finished? Dumbledore. Lunch. But to be fair, the highlight was when he was fighting the men in black guys, particularly the part when he was throwing sugar at them. <laughs> Best fight scene I've ever seen. And oh, did I mention that John Cleese is in this? Well, at the very least I did because he's barely in the movie as well and thank god for that because he's a creep. I mean seriously, how does he know where they live? And also, imagine that scene with really creepy music and you'll instantly agree with me. And Clifford. Oh my god, was he just absolutely fine. I mean, yeah, the design doesn't look too good, but you know, he does look like one of those pranks that the Superior Clifford movie would make. Oh, Uncle Martin, stop! But it's not like he's obnoxious, except the fact that the movie keeps telling you that he's the most special and caring dog you'll ever see when in actuality his entire runtime was him destroying homes, hurting and or traumatizing people, and saving only one person. Now, you might be asking, are there any good things in this movie? 
And the answer is yeah, there actually is. For one, the shots of New York look absolutely gorgeous, but that's not me complimenting the movie and more or less New York itself. There were some lines that were pretty well written and a few jokes that kinda made me chuckle. And honestly, the one good moment in the entire movie was when Clifford was getting on the boat. You may have seen this in the trailer, but it's the scene where Emily says, I think he's trying to be small. It was subtle, it was sweet, it was exactly what the books were trying to entail, it was executed well, and it doesn't hit the message with a hammer so hard that it knocks your teeth out until it does. Whoa, I mean, did I just hear a dog b -b 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 bark? I mean, I've seen an animated dog do this. But this? Wow, you see that? He's violent! I mean, that's just jail time, pal. It's not right to take him away just because he's big and red. What does being red have to do with anything? Come on, if you're racist and you know it, clap your hands. Also, this isn't a speech. This is one of those lessons those Darman videos teach you about when they always say they're changing lives, but in actuality, it's in a completely different way. Honestly, the most underwhelming part of the entire speech was the fact they didn't say, so you see a couple million of times. Who's with me? Emily Elizabeth May Clifford stay. Making us learn that this movie is downright messed up. Anyway, this movie is pretty dull. That's really all I have to say. So I'm gonna give Clifford the Big Red Dog a Big Red 4 out of 10. Honestly, when you really come down to it, it is pretty forgettable. Not unlike the fact that Clifford almost ate a dog by the name of T-Bone.